Hi everybody, um, this is DC here. I'm sorry, I've, I've been away for a while and I've been studying electrics and uh, I've come to the conclusion that electric is both magnetic and dielectric, two components together. They cannot be uh, separated. A little bit like negative and positive on a car battery. Um, there is another element which is time, but I'm going to ignore time for the moment. But if we just look at the, if we just look at the classic theory of electric and the fields which go around the, these two, you'll be familiar with that these are probably power cables. Uh, one will be uh, the, the live and one will be the neutral. And the, these are the fields that are in between uh, the two conductors. If you notice there's dotted lines there, if I just get a bit closer you may be able to see. The dotted lines <coughs> represent dielectric. So uh, the continuous line is the magnetic field. They cannot be separated. So, um, you know, that's it. The, the mystery of electric is, uh, there's a lot of hybrids of electric, <coughs> which incorporate static. But um, my conclusion is that um, the you need the magnetic and the dielectric, the po if you like, the positive and negative, for formation of electric. We'll just step back a little bit here. If, if we look at a conductor here, and th this conductor has a flux going out and back, out and back in an alternating manner, it has a magnetic flux, but also it, it, it has a um, dielectric pulse as well, which is at 90 degrees to one another. And that's what this here is trying to explain. So uh, this is a key element uh, of, St uh, this is taken from, I think, I believe Steinmetz drawings um, about what's going on between uh, two conductors, two parallel conductors. Um, for today, um, we've, we've got a situation where I've uh, been playing around with the electric. Um, over here, we have a, a coil which I've been practicing on for quite a while. So what we have here, and this is the schematics. So if we just go from this side to the other side, we start off with a, a, a DC power supply and then it goes to a DC motor. So it's a regulated power supply to a DC motor. And on the DC motor, I've made my own disc, which is a contact breaker. It's just a disc uh, made special with make and break contacts. Um, so you've got a contact breaker which then goes, is fed to a coil, a high voltage coil. So the, the output from this coil, which is like a car coil, um, is related to the revolutions of the, a disc on here. So the faster the revolutions, the more pulses you've, of uh, high voltage electric current going through, through a fluorescent tube. This is a fluorescent tube here, which runs right the way through to this end. And um, what uh, what that fluorescent tube runs in is a steel uh, it's a steel scaffold tube which I've cut off. So the f the fluorescent tube goes in the in the middle of it. And what I've done at this point, where you see the red here and here, is that I've introduced magnets. They're just ordinary magnets, cheap magnets which you can buy off the internet. They're about a three inch radius with a with a hole in the middle of them, about an inch hole in the middle. I've positioned the magnets with north, south, north, south. And then so uh, we're firing, firing a flash, if you like, through the steel tube, uh, which energizes the coil. And then we have a, an output from the coil here. Um, we've got, uh, I'm measuring with a meter here, the electrical potential to a clean earth. I do stress this is a, a clean earth which I've just knocked a, a rod in an earthy rod in the ground, <clears throat> got a reasonable resistance, and so we're testing to a clean earth. And <clears throat> uh, on the machine you'll see on the bench you'll see a, a, an earthy rod and an earthy rod. They are not connected to the machine. They're not connected to any wiring. They're just they're just sat there basically. 
Um, I have just tapped in a condenser or capacitor rather to each of them but in no way is it connected to the, the main energetic flux here and uh, they do become live and I'm wondering why and I've discovered that it's uh, dielectricity. <laughs> um, right okay I digress a little bit. Um, so there you've got the basic setup. We've got some outputs here right so and the input let's start from the input at the bottom is 11.7 volts DC at point three of an amp so that's fed into uh, the electric motor the electric motor is a DC motor 24 12 to 24 volts which when it's on 24 volts the um, the motor gives out uh, I think it's uh, 20,000 revs per minute but you'll notice on this experiment that I'm doing is that there's a very very low rev it's only just ticking over so I'll take you over to the uh, bench and the machine there we have <coughs> the power and the, it's a DC output which comes along here to so a couple of screws which I've just tapped these screws into some wood so um, this is the the negative and that's the live and then um, what I've introduced into the circuitry yeah there's a little pot here you'll be familiar with these type of pots no doubt you get them cheap off the internet and uh, this pot regulates the motor so d regardless of the power supply I can regulate the motor separate from the power supply um, the way I've done it is uh, I've connected the the negative to the center pin on this which goes through the motor and I've connected it to a, a self-made uh, make and break contact I don't know whether you'll be able to see the contact here but there's a set of points here a set of car points actually uh, and that just makes contact with the spikes uh, here uh, the 72 spike so one revolution of this disc the 72 shots if you like and then the power it then goes through a, a transformer this is a car transformer or coil car coil and then what I do is the high voltage that comes off it that's generated I just send through this tube here um, and then on the on the end oh, on the end of a scaffold tube here I've got some magnets if you look carefully you'll be able to see that that's the north there end north and then the magnets are stuck on the scaffold tube here that's part of the scaffold tube and then there's this coil that's wrapped round the uh, tube so it's just a copper coil um, it has got other coils in it but I'm just regarding the copper for the main main moment it, it is actually this coil it's it, it, it's a coil that's made up as an earth battery a stubble field earth battery but I'm just using the copper at the moment so if you go along to this end you'll see We've got magnets again, and now you'll see, if you look closely, you'll see an S on there. That's the south side of the magnet. And this is the other end of the scaffold tube here. We've got a connection here. And it runs through to here. So it goes, sort of goes round the system. Okay, um, I'm going to fire it up. Right, fire it up there. So the motor's running. Um, I do have to disconnect it here because I found that if if I um, just bear with me a second, if I leave it on, it, it tends to stall. So what we've got a situation now is we're just firing the tube up. We'll put the light out. You'll see the tube working, flashing. <laughs> And you'll see it flashing there okay put the light back on now what's interesting now is the output as you can see I've got one probe here one probe here which is connected to this here which is the clean earth so I'm going to switch this on now with trying to get a good right now we're getting a, a DC, it's sort of a mixed output, but it's DC. 
and the DC runs from about 50 volts DC to about mm, 60 something sometimes okay so it's up and down as you would expect really but also if we switch over to AC you're getting about 90 volts AC out of it as well and it's not automatically selecting it with the with this machine so I can't really say it's AC or DC at the moment okay so there we there we have it folks um, I'm going to I'm going to vary the speed here and we'll see what difference it makes Actually, as we increase the speed, the AC drops off. So if I bring it back down, so we've got the flux going through the tube nice and steady, it jumps up. As you can see, it's got all over the place. But what is interesting is this. This this this, this here is it's just a you know a, a ground rod, and it's not connected. But it's live. I don't know whether you can see that. That's live, seriously live, and yet it's not connected. The scaffold tube is well live. I don't put my finger on the end because it, it, fi it fires me. And near the magnets, as you as you would expect, I don't know if you can see it. That's live. Up. Also, <laughs> that gives me a bit of a whack then. So, what we've got here, folks, is a machine that can charge. Batteries run off a bat run off a battery, which can put more in than it takes out. Um, so there we are. Very interesting, and that's where I'm at at the moment. So uh, I'd welcome any feedback on this, folks. And um, I'm just fascinated, absolutely fascinating. And this really encourages me. It really does. Um, whatever's going on here, I'm, I'm just while, while you're on, or while I'm making this video, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the power up here to about say maybe 18. So we're on 18 volts. It's push it, pushing out 33 volts. <laughs> 90 to 100 volts. Let's say call it. Let's call it 90 volts. But when I slow it up, slow the machine up, and drop it off here. The voltage increases. Which is very exciting. So we get according to that we we're definitely taking taking more out than we're putting in. <laughs> Amazing. So that's where I'm at, folks. A big thank you to all my subscribers. Any comments on what's going on here? And we'll go on to the next phase of the development. Thank you.